So, if you've been to a Bed Bath & Beyond or any drugstore, you've probably seen plug-and-play consoles that look like these. They usually feature a couple games at a low price. These things usually get a bad rep because they're cheaply made, the emulation is poor, and they usually feature the NES versions of games. But are all these plug-and-play consoles bad? Or are there some decent ones out there? Well, let's take a look. What's going on guys? It's Poger, coming at you with another video. So we're going to be talking about some plug and play consoles. So I wanted to give a shout out to MarksFan2008. He helped a lot with this video and he's a big plug and play collector. He was one of the first members of our Discord server and he was actually one of the first people to stream. Um, now time for Tiger Draga. Tiger Draga, okay. It never really captured my attention for more than 30 seconds, to be honest. <laughs> it's slow, confusing, like sometimes like when you complete a level on a higher level, like it sometimes takes you back to previous levels, which is kind of unfair for an arcade game. Speaking of Discord, if you'd like to join, just go to discord.poger.net or just click on the link in the description. Also, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button right there. I'm trying to hit 10,000 by the end of the year. Somebody in the comments says it's not going to happen. Let's prove them wrong. Anyway, I think we have some plug and plays to talk about. Ms. Pac-Man's back, along with four other arcade classics. Just plug it and play it. An entire In the early 2000s, retro games were on the rise. While new consoles like the GameCube and PS2 were out, there were a handful of gamers that wanted to relive the retro gaming experience. Around the same time, there was a piece of technology called System on a Chip that was becoming more popular. For those who don't know, System on a Chip was a much simpler and quicker way to build new game consoles. With this new way to make cheap consoles, some companies began making $20 units that could play retro games. These plug-and-play consoles were almost always powered by batteries with no option to plug in an adapter. Because they're all-in-one units, you're usually stuck with awkward-looking controllers that are hard to play on, and of course, you can't substitute them. The earlier consoles usually only offered composite output, and the NES versions of games were used whenever possible. In fact, most plug-and-play consoles used NES on a chip because it was smaller, easier to manufacture, and cheaper. You normally see these plug-and-play consoles at places like Bed Bath & Beyond, Rite Aid, CVS, and Walgreens. These units are commonly found around Christmas time because they're stocking stuffers. Why pay $300 for the PS2 when you could pay just $20 for the Atari 10-in-1? With that said, one of the most popular plug-and-play companies in the early 2000s was Jack's Pacific. They made all kinds of consoles based on retro games, movies, TV shows, and more. Because they're $20 units, most people would probably assume that these are very poor quality. But before we judge, let's take an honest look at a few of them. First, we're going to look at the Atari 10-in-1. This is one of their first and most popular plug-and-plays. Because I make a lot of videos focused on Atari, I assume you guys want my opinion on this one. The controller is much heavier than a regular 2600 one, but the form factor is excellent on this. It feels just like the real thing. I'm honestly really impressed. So, this collection features a bunch of 2600 games. They got the selection 100% correct here. It contains pretty much all of Atari's most well-known games, and even a console exclusive, Yar's Revenge. So, while a casual player would probably have a great time with this collection, a lot of these games feel different from the originals. The game Pong, for example, only has two game variations. That's not right at all. The original game, called Video Olympics, has over 30 variations. What happened? Yar's Revenge looks different too. The original game flickered a lot, but in this plug-and-play, there's no flicker whatsoever. Yeah, I'm starting to believe this is not emulation or real hardware. To make matters worse, none of the games sound anything like their 2600 counterparts. So 
So because I was suspicious, I decided to look into it and I found out this plug and play doesn't even use real 2600 hardware. It actually uses an NES on a chip. Yeah, that's right, they're basically NES games that have been modified to look like 2600 games. Despite that though, I do have to be fair, most of these games are pretty faithful to their 2600 versions and the controller has an amazing form factor. A casual player is not going to notice the inaccuracies and would most likely have a great time with this collection. So, honest confession, I actually owned this plug and play as a kid and it was my introduction to the Atari 2600. If it were not for this collection, I might not be making videos today. Alright, now let's look at the Namco 5-in-1. This is another one of their really early plug and plays. The controller is a bit more awkward shaped, but the form factor is still decent and it mimics an arcade stick pretty well. Because I see Pac-Man, Galaxian, and Dig Dug on here, I thought they were going to use the NES versions, but to my surprise, they didn't. I give Jax Pacific a lot of credit for this. Their versions of Pac-Man and Galaxian look and sound better than their NES counterparts. However, there's some issues. I don't like their version of Dig Dug. It looks better graphically than the NES one, but it's not super arcade accurate. The dragons no longer have any startup frames before they breathe out fire, and you can't pump through narrow walls, even though you could in the arcade version. I also don't like the status bar on the right. They couldn't give you a visual of how many lives you have left? This almost looks like a bootleg. The NES version, while it looked worse in some aspects, was more arcade accurate. Speaking of arcade accurate, these games do sound a bit off. I really have a bone to pick with Bossonian. The menu shows your ship moving diagonally, but in the game, you can only move four ways. That's not fair, you can't tease me like that. That's false advertising. I do gotta commend Jax Pacific for including this and Rally X on here though. You don't typically see these games as much on collections, so it's nice they make an appearance here. So I decide to look into it and unlike the Atari plug and play, this is not an NES on a chip. So even though it's not NES hardware, the graphics do kinda look like it. None of the games have any parallax scrolling whatsoever, and the color palettes remind me of NES. This is kinda cool to see because Rally X and Bossonian never received official NES versions. Perhaps this is what they would've looked like if they did. So overall, we got a better effort from Jack Pacific with these games than most other plug and plays that use the NES versions. But you can tell this is one of their earlier collections. The sound is poor, they butchered Dig Dog, and Bossonian doesn't have any diagonals. For its time though, this was an acceptable collection. Now we're going to look at the Spongebob 5-in-1. God, this controller is horrible. The design is cute, but it's super light and it feels really cheap. It's almost like Mad Cats made this thing. So even though this plug and play is based on a TV show and not a game company, I think it appeals to a similar audience because these games resemble classic titles. Spongebob's Bubble Pop is just Breakout, the Super Chum Bucket is Donkey Kong, and Sandy's Surf Adventure resembles your typical horizontal shooter. The graphics are noticeably better in this one with way more colors on screen. SpongeBob's animation is really good and the graphics do look a lot like the show. Some of the games are also very creative too. I really like Invasion of the Hook. Here, you must throw Krabby Patties at oncoming hooks to prevent them from capturing your friends. I like how they're all just standing there. In the Chum Bucket game, you must make it to Plankton while avoiding the enemies. There's actually a lot of levels in this game, so it'll keep you occupied for a while. Speaking of Plankton, I never understood why he wanted the secret Krabby Patty formula. It's a burger. You cook it on a stove and you add toppings. What more does he need to know? My first issue with this collection is the music. None of these games have any background music except for a 5 second tune you hear at the beginning. The game really needs more sound effects that capture the Spongebob universe, but instead they went with your typical 80s arcade sounds. Also, I have a question. How do you have a Spongebob collection without the theme song? Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? You'll never know after playing this. 
So while the games are playable, they're super basic. In the Chum Bucket game, you're always on one screen with the same background color. In Bubble Pop, you start out with way too many lives and it gets boring fast. In the Hook game, as much as I like the concept, it's too easy and there's really not much to it. In general, these games are fun at first, but they do get boring fast. And the fact that there's no background music only amplifies the boredom. Overall, most of these titles are mediocre, but acceptable for the price point. If this collection had more Spongebob related music and a better controller, it would have been a step in the right direction. But all things considered, this is a decent collection of games. So we're going to look at one more unit by Jack Specific, and it's another Namco one. This is probably the most well-known plug and play. It gets talked about a lot, and I remember seeing commercials on TV about it. So, here's a question. Because this is a later release, does this mean we'll see some improvements? Well, let's find out. The lineup of games in this one is way better. I would take Galaga over Galaxian any day of the week, and Ms. Pac-Man is better than Pac-Man. The shape of the controller is very awkward and hard to hold, but the build quality is nice, way better than the Spongebob one, but I still think the Atari controller is my favorite. So unlike the first Namco plug and play, these games sound really close to their arcade counterparts. The graphics are also more colorful, which is something we saw in the Spongebob collection. I really feel like I'm getting the arcade experience here. Let's talk about Ms. Pac-Man because this is one of the best versions of the game. I like that there's no stupid bezel on screen and no extra bells and whistles. It's just the arcade experience that's optimized for a 4x3 screen. I feel like this game didn't get enough great ports and I'm glad to see one here. I'm also very satisfied with how Galaga turned out. If this game were on the original Namco plug and play, it would have been much worse. They did something really interesting with pull position. This game actually has analog controls by twisting the knob on the joystick. It actually controls very nicely and they went above and beyond by doing this. Mappy and Xevious are also nice additions because they're more obscure games. Overall, this is a very solid collection of games and there's a lot of improvements over the last Namco plug and play. The game selection is better and the titles sound and look more arcade accurate. Whether you're a casual player or a hardcore gamer, you'll love this collection. So what do I consider the best collection of the four? So I'm going to rank these. The worst plug and play, in my opinion, is the Pac-Man one. The sound is off, the graphics look more like NES, and this version of Dig Dug is super sloppy. The next one is the Atari Collection. These ports could have been better, but it gets extra points for its excellent controller and great lineup of games. The second best is going to be the Spongebob one. The graphics are colorful, there's a great lineup of games, and you get a lot of content here. But the controller is horrible, there's no Spongebob related music, and the games do get boring fast. And finally, my favorite plug and play is the Ms. Pac-Man one. These are near perfect arcade ports with accurate sound, great controls, and a fantastic lineup of games. So I just wanted to give the spotlight to these Jack specific plug and play consoles because you would assume these would be bad, but these are actually decent collections. Hey, I just wanted to thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, hit that like button. If you enjoy this type of content, hit the subscribe button for more content. Both of these things really help the channel grow. If you have anything to share, feel free to leave a comment. I read every single comment on this channel, and I'm pretty good at replying back. Anyway, have a good one.